Greetings! Hi, I'm Mr. Sean. Welcome to my channel. And today we're going to do a Let's Play. We're going to go back and continue on with the love at first sight. Let's get into it. Uh, if you don't remember, last time we had gone to school, we met our friends, went up, we went up to the third floor to return a book for Akemi. Couldn't find the girl, but we found a beautiful one-eyed girl with had bandages all over, all over her. Her uniform was really scruffed up. Uh, talked to her for a little bit, gave her a handkerchief, and basically ran away. <laughs> so, got back home. So, mom's talking to me, so let's get into this. Oh, welcome home. You're a little late, aren't you? What are you doing? Kimmy roped me into being her errand boy. She wanted me to deliver something for her. Ha! Later that night, I let out a deep sigh as I'm lying with my futon, unable to sleep. For some reason, I couldn't tell my mom about the one-eyed girl. It wasn't like it was a traumatic event or anything, but I almost feel... guilty? At any rate, I can't stop thinking about her face. I know that if I don't fall asleep soon, I'm going to have to rush to school tomorrow. I try to forget about everything that happened today, but I just can't keep my eyes closed. She looked like she wanted to say something back there, but I panicked and ran away. I kind of regret not staying now. I roll into my, I roll over in my futon several times, but eventually I come to a decision. I'm going to try and find that girl again. I feel like I should at least learn her name. Good man. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, she, she, what? Oh no. Act two, have an eye for. I don't think there's, I don't recall seeing a little thing there on her. Let's we'll see what happens. The next day, I try to clear my head as I'm walking to school, but I can't stop thinking about that girl. Should I leave past during the break to go look for her? It's going to be difficult to leave without a good excuse, though. Maybe when school's over, I'll go where to I met her yesterday and say I just happened to buy. There's no guarantee she's going to be in the same place today. Besides, I didn't exactly handle the situation gracefully, leaving her like I was trying to run away. Definitely not the best impression to make. I'll try to... I'll have to think of some excuse for going. Why did I even go to investigate her crying in the first place? I'm not even sure I know myself. That girl... I don't even know her name. What should I call her? Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I even think of what to call her, I actually have to find her first. I'll ask her name and introduce myself, and that'll probably be good enough. She'll probably think I'm some kind of freak, but I guess that's fine. Maybe if I just talk to her, it'll light up some of the tension between us. Yeah, it could it's certainly help. I look up to find I arrived at school. Looks like I'm, I was on autopilot again. I get inside, change my shoes, head up to the second floor where my classroom is. So I walk up the stairs, I see something strange moving out of the corner of my eye. Oh, there she is! Peeking around the corner of the Kicking Hallway is a head of brown hair. It's the girl I've been seeing in my mind all morning. Uh, she does have a little thing on her cheek. God dang it! You can definitely see I hope, it's, I hope that's just shading and not punching the eye, but it looks a little dark on that side. Poor girl, it really is just hammered here. I seem to be the only one who noticed her head popping around the corner. She must think that pose would keep her totally hidden, as if she's in the manga or something. But she really stands out, at least to me. She's moving her eye around frantically, sure enough, she picks me out from the sparse crowd. I'm so surprised to see her, all I can think is, why is a first year student on the second floor before she hurries up to me? Okay, yeah, definitely in the more lights. God dang, she really has a ragged clothing here. Uh, here. She hands me a familiar handkerchief. That's right, I totally forgot it. I lent it to her yesterday. I take the handkerchief, which she had folded neatly into a perfect square. I think she even washed it. Er, uh, yesterday. I mean, th thank you. As soon as she says the, this in her tiny voice, she runs down the stairs and vanishes around the corner. Hold on, wait! I can't stop myself from calling out, but the morning bell rings, drowning out my voice for me. Oh well. I'll head to my classroom. Lunch bell rings. Oh god dang. School's flying by. I snatch my book in the desk and bolt out of the classroom. 
didn't even get to thank the girl for washing my handkerchief. I go to look for her to say I wanted. I go to look for her to say what I wanted or to earlier. I have a good excuse to talk to her now. I can't let this chance slip away. I arrive at the end of the hallway, but instead of going down to the first year of classrooms, I head upstairs. I don't look for sure, but I think there's a good chance she's going to be up where I met her yesterday. Well, even if she's not, I can look. Just, I can just look elsewhere. Get to the third floor. Keep going all the way up to the stairs that lead to the roof. Hey, <sighs> just like yesterday, she's sitting in the same step at the bottom of the stairs. I see her shoulders jolt when she hears my voice and she looks up at me. Her mouth is opening and closing rapidly. She clearly wants to say something, but can't find the words. She's in the same position I was in yesterday, it seems. Thanks for washing my handkerchief. I didn't get a chance to say that earlier. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of confusion in her soft voice. The fact that she's looking everywhere but at my face tells me she's not sure what to do. I'm obviously making her uncomfortable. Obviously. I'm obviously making her uncomfortable, but I'm not going to run away like I did yesterday. So this is where you eat your lunch, huh? Do you mind if I join you? I say this as gently as possible as I know it's the lunchbox she's got perched on her knees. That's a good place to put it, I guess. Yeah, if you're going somewhere to do lunch time, you're probably bringing your lunch as well. Well, while we're talking, I think I'm on lunch. Yeah, I think about it. I don't know if she has any other friends to eat lunch with. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Her answer comes, comes too quickly, and I wonder if she really means it. Her eyes start starting wildly around the corner in her, in her effort to make, avoid making eye contact, and she begins to look even more nervous. Thanks. I'll just sit down on these steps. Oh, that's me. <laughs> she didn't tell me to go away, at least. I take a seat next to her and pack my lunch. This seems to startle her. She leans away from me as if she's trying to escape. I sat next to her, but it's not like I, I'm that close to her. I'm a little offended. While I'm unpacking my lunch, I look her over as casually as I can manage. Oh, god dang, girl. Up until now, I was fixated on her eye, but the rest of her appearance is pretty striking as well. Her head is covered in bandages, her hair is messy and unkept. Her uniform looks like it's been ripped apart and only partially stitched back together. I catch glimpses of her skin on her shoulders and stomach, and it looks far from normal. Yeah, she looks like she got really bruised up here. What the crap's going on? I noticed that she has bruises, or maybe birthmarks, not sure which, all over her legs, her neck, and anywhere else I can see. Skin on her dainty limbs look white as a ghost. She doesn't look healthy by any standard. Is that? Suddenly our eyes meet. I guess I was staring too, obviously. Uh, we couldn't break eye contact, but she keeps shooting me sidelong glances. Like she's worried. I'll attack her or something. I'm clutching the chopsticks, but my lunch remains untouched. Long silence is getting uncomfortable. I try, I try to strike up some conversation. Ah, kind of think of it. I haven't even introduced myself. I am Fukunaga Mamaru. What's your name? It, it's Usumi Sachi. Sachi, huh? Nice to finally meet you. N nice to meet you. Looks like she's not too talkative, though I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I have, have to keep the conversation going somehow. Do you always eat lunch up here? Does anyone else come up here with you or anything? Yes, I always eat here. No one else comes with me. Maybe that was too forward, but the fact that she, no one else comes up with her isn't too surprising. She, she's probably always alone. She shifts her attention onto me, watching me cautiously. Is that... Is she that afraid of me touching her? I see. So what do you do during lunch break then? Read, finish homework, a few other things. Oh really? What kind of book are you reading? I haven't really read any books, books lately. Sorry. Such a cries out abruptly, her voice rising like she's about to lose her mind. My lunch. I mean, I did so, uh, excuse me. Aww. No sooner does she say this that she scoops up her almost untouched lunchbox and runs down the stairs. Can't wait she's after her with my lunchbox sitting open on my legs, so she leaves me, me behind. I've just been run out on, and silence falls over the stairwell. I guess trying to force conversation like that backfired. Sachi only ever replied to my questions with a few words at a time, but she kept looking over at me with a worried eye. Did I really make her that uneasy? 
Is it that hard for her to open up to me? This girl seems to lead a very troubled life, and I might not ever be able to get close to her. No, just because I had one unsuccessful experiment doesn't mean I should give up. Before, I thought I had been satisfied if I had just spoke to her once. But now, I have an overwhelming desire to get to know her. I have to become friends with her now. No matter what, I can't give up. I have to keep trying. Yeah, well, being enthusiastic about it is one thing, but there's nothing I can do right now. I might as well eat, eat my food. While I think about a way to meet up her again, I finish off what's up to my lunch. It's so quiet here now. I thought that no matter where in the school you were during lunchtime, you'd be able to hear students, loudly voices. But to barely reach this lonely place, it's like I'm in another world. The voices of the students talking down below are so quiet that the sound of my chopsticks clicking against my lunch is like a hammer on stone. Even the sound of my shirt rustling as I move is like the howling of the wind in comparison. How could she eat like this every day? As I close my empty lunchbox and make up my mind, I absolutely have to become friends with her. I'm liking this guy. He definitely sees something wrong and he actually wants to try to help her, you know, as much as, as he, she's willing to let him. But it's good to see that he has some determination to keep going with this. Returning to my classroom, I catch Tomo and Akemi just as they were finishing their lunches. Hey, where'd you go? The two of us ate our lunches together all alone. I kind of think about it, I never said anything to them as I left. Oh, my bad. I pitched my lunch too. Where'd you run off to? Hey, have you guys seen a first year girl with er, a really unusual appearance? What do you mean by that? A first year girl? One with the ocular issue? No way of saying it. Yeah, that sounds like her. Eh? What? What? What are you talking about? Something I don't know about? Oh, this probably isn't something you'd want to hear. It's not really a happy story. How rude! You should keep things from your friends. That's not what I meant, but... Anyway, why do you want to know about her? No reason, I just heard about her and I got curious as all. Well. Do you know her? Personally, no. I've seen her around, but I never talked to her. As far as... As for what I've heard of her, I'm not sure if it's true or not. It might all be just baseless rumors. That's fine, just tell me what you know. Are you sure you really want to know? Tomo looks side to side like he wants to make sure no one else is listening, even though the three of us are all alone in here. Uh, yeah? Alright. He probably trips away from me and stares at the floor. It looks as though he's starting into another dimension. Staring into a third dimension. <clears throat> Fine. But what I'm about to say. But take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. A first year student in class two, female, name, Usui, something. I only remember her family name, but she only has one eye. Wait, one eye? You mean she lost one in an accident? She didn't lose one, she only ever had one, right in the center of her face. One big eye. What? You mean she was born that way? I don't know the details, but it seems that she was. I've only ever seen her from afar, but I really don't think that's an injury. That's a real person, like one of the first year classes? I've never seen her or even heard about her, not once. Well, we are in a different year from her. But regardless, I guess she was trying hard to stay hidden, both from the other students and from herself. What do you mean, she's trying to stay hidden from herself? I told you, it wasn't a happy story. Tomo takes a quick glance at Akemi. He's worried to have said so much about Sachi around her, though it's not like I'm forcing him to tell him. Yesterday, he avoided the subject of school celebrities. Was that because he didn't want to talk about Sachi? That's all I've heard, but she does have a startling appearance. She's definitely not normal. Maybe she's creepy, maybe not. But you have to admit that at the very least, she's unusual. She's fascinating to some and scary to others. I'm sure there are plenty more who find her disturbing. 
and what I hear, she's all covered in wounds, so it's hard to believe they're all accidental concerning how many she has. So in that case, could they be from someone beating her up? If someone at home was hurting her, I couldn't tell you, but there's a real possibility that she's being bullied at school. Physically bullied, in that case. Could it be it? Before I wasn't sure what caused all of her injuries, but thinking back, what's Tobo saying makes sense. Doesn't anyone try to protect her? I told you. All I know is rumors, not details. But, but, there's another student who's a little famous, and I think she's more responsible for bullying the girl. It's really trying, isn't it? This catch me off guard. I can't believe normally so loud it speaks in a hushed tone. And I think about it, she's been abnormally quiet the whole time. Tomo's been telling us about Sachi. I always figured that Kemi would be the first to denounce bullying whenever she sees it, but do you know her? I wouldn't say we know her, per se. We just ran into her several times during middle school. Doesn't that mean they know her? Kemi seems to be staring into space now, thinking. Anyway, whether or not we know her doesn't really matter, but yes. The alleged assailant is this girl, Sadokawa Rui. <clears throat> I've heard that she's from a well off household and was pampered growing up as a result. She's very self centered. That's the impression I got when I first met her. But there's probably more to it than that. She's really popular among other students as well. That also contributes to her behavior, or at least I think so. I see. Thanks for telling me. I can find out the truth of this on my own later on, but I think I'm starting to understand more of the situation now. So what do you think of this one eyed girl? As Tomo said, the fact is that Sachi is very unusual and I'm very curious to know what he thinks about it. Depending on his response, I may have to keep my plans. <clears throat> I just told you what I think. So tell me, what were you doing, doing during lunch? Why are you so concerned about this? I didn't plan on hiding it, but I guess I couldn't have anyway. No one seems to understand what I was getting at. I can't fool you. You made it too obvious. As I, as I said before, I only have trivial information. You shouldn't judge a book by her cover, so to speak. I haven't concerned myself with her until now because I didn't have any reason to. That said, if you want to help her out, you've got my support. I see. Well, thanks. I didn't think there were any problems, but still, I'm glad someone was so eager to help. I keep my face expressionless, but I breathe in an internal sigh of relief. <coughs> wait, wait! Did you actually meet this girl with Makun? I can't wait to turns to her previous loud demeanor. Yeah, I did. Not fair! I want to make friends with this girl too! Makun, introduce, introduce me! Yep, I kind of back to her old self. That way she's... The way she was acting before was so unlike her. She seemed worried when Sadokawa and her bully came up. But now it's like she wasn't even here for that part of this conversation. At least I don't have to worry about a Kemi being nice to Sachi. If he ever did meet, she's so damn friendly. Um, I'm not sure how I, I would do that. I mean, I'm not even really friends with her. Um, come on, what are you trying to say? I mean, it's just, she's not, I mean, it's just, she's not used to talking to people. I think talking to someone like you would be really overwhelming for her. What's that supposed to be? You don't want me to be here? That's definitely not fair. It's because your voice is capable of leveling buildings. <laughs> oh, damn. oh gosh, these guys are these guys are harsh. Hey, hey, hey! Come on, it's not like I'm giving a speech to a huge audience. It's no exaggeration to say I'm professional at having super relaxed conversations with guys, girls, kids, even dogs, cats, and even lizards. Lizards. Okay. It's definitely an exaggeration. You are intimidating with that loud voice of yours. That meeting is going to end that girl running away in tears. That's right, I know these two are good people. As much as I want to introduce Sachi, I don't think suddenly coming up with two more people is a good idea when she really knows me. Ooh, what about Tumble then? I don't think that would work either. Don't you think she'd be just a little scared of two guys she doesn't know walk up to her and start talking to her? She pats a tumble. He's right. I don't exactly have the friendliest face. It's safe as you just be with her on your own for a little while. It's true, he really will. He's really tall. 
and he always has somewhat of a strange look in his eyes. I probably scared her enough all my all on my own, but if I brought Tomo along, she'd probably scream and run away. Sorry, you two. Fine, I get it. I'll give you a little while. But someday, you have to introduce me. Sure, I promise. Good luck. You need help, just ask us. Thanks. When it comes to that, I've got to take up your offer. Or that half that point. Well, it's either way. Uh, looks like we've gone on long enough. So for this episode, we're gonna stop right there. We'll finish up lunch. Finish up. Oh, next day lunch. So <laughs> we'll see what happens the day later. Uh, so hope you like this game. Hope you like the story so far. Uh, drop a comment below if you if you have any things to ask about the game itself, or if you have any suggestions for future novels, please put them down below. I'll get see if I can get to them uh, for future games. Also, leave a like if you, if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe in order to see more videos for unboxings, more visual games, continuation of Love at First Sight, and many more. Thank you, have a good night, ciao.